Hi, hello and welcome to Learn Stroke IS classes by Arjun. You're listening to the editorial analysis for 2024 examination, especially current affairs. This is class number 18 and uh, you're with me Arjun R. Shankar. So let's quickly move on and if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to our channel and uh, uh, please do press the bell icon to receive the classes at your fingertips and uh, let's talk about the important topics of the day. The first one talks about ISRO and the human space flight. Is it really going to be possible? It was actually 2022 that the target was and uh, due to COVID-19 there was some there has some been some delay and we have to wait till 2025 or even after that. So what is ISRO's human space flight Gaganyaan? And what about the concept of right to marry? Very important from GS paper to internal uh, polity and governance. And let's take a look up the constitutional aspects of right to marry. And also uh, the ecology of the Himalayas, GS paper 3, environmental biodiversity angles and conservation of Himalayas and the ecology. And then as regarding the intelligence failure of Israel. So uh, you know that a lot of articles these days come relating to Israel-Palestine, but this is very, very particular regarding the intelligence failure of Israel from that angle. And we have to look at Gaza's growth. What about the poverty, unemployment, etc. What is happening in Gaza and how bad is that? That is something we have to discuss in this today's session and quickly go into the first editorial GS paper 3. It's about the space and science and technology. So it talks about the flight of Gaganyaan or human space lift mission from Sriharikota and the first one was TVD1. So let's apply the IIS filter before we take the most important points and start our explanation. So here we go to the first important one. So the first ISRO's human space flight. So in this context, what is your awareness about the humans and the space flight? So India is not the first to do that because you must have heard about even if it is America's Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin and Michael Collins or even it is and many other people who have done the space walk and uh, what about Valentina Tereshkova? So what is the history of humans in space? We need to have a clear idea on that, especially what about Rakesh Sarma? And so what about Indian mission on moon? So no, Gaganyaan, it's human space flight mission, uh, which is actually going to take place in October 21, had actually a small phase. A small phase was actually done on October 21. And the mission involves sending astronauts to space and uh, the first pilot testing was a big thing and the safety ensuring of the safety was the most important thing so they it is actually just a small phase that has begun a lot needs to be done before we can send astronauts into space so have this point so a test flight called tvd1 that is a test flight involves a single stage rocket carrying a crew module equipped with CES. So now everybody after some time is going to talk about CES or crew escape system. The system's purpose was to uh, protect the astronauts in case of a rocket malfunction. So anyway, we are putting in humans into the space flight. So what about the safety of them? So the crew escape system is actually a, uh, a protection thing which can actually help the astronaut if there is a rocket malfunctioning happening. So the CES separated from rocket and climbed to 17 km before separating from the crew module which then descended in the Bay of Bengal using parachutes. So you can see the CES actually separated from the rocket. So you can clearly understand if this is the rocket, it got separated. The portion, the CES got separated from the rocket and climbed to 17 km before separating from the crew module which has then descended. So it got separated. It got separated and uh, it actually then descended into the Bay of Bengal using parachutes. So using parachutes is something that we should remember. So this is all about the parachute. So please remember TVD1 is actually the recent test that they have conducted. So th the test aimed to evaluate the CES ability to safeguard the crew and collect important data. So crew escape systems ability to safeguard the test was basically conducted 
to know how well the cess is actually working so we need to keep our astronaut safe also and stringent data testing and delay so isro's commitment to um, thorough testing is evident even the parachute underwent 16 tests so this time no no malfunctions and uh, no errors we need perfection so uh, you know that the covid 19 has created a usual delay because it was actually 2022 was the target to send humans into space but uh, due to the late uh, problems relating to covid 19 we have shifted it to 2025 so please remember about that 2025 and see and modi has uh, prime minister has challenged the isro to send humans to moon by 2040 is it going to be an easy task america has already done that 1969 and now we are in 2040 so uh, there is a big time delay the goal is ambitious but gaganyaan mission demonstrates the importance of careful planning extensive testing and boosting local manufacturing again bringing in an economy aspect we should take local manufacturing use things that are made in india even if deadlines are missed the mission can be carried out with confidence using local capabilities also we are depending everything in made in india or make in india so let's really hope that india will really make it to the moon and humans will actually land on the moon so what were the key objectives of isro's uncrewed developmental flight tvd1 in gaganyaan human space mission so it's a very narrow question but simple these questions uh, are important if you try to find the answers okay let's quickly move on the court's no fundamental right to marry is wrong see all these are individual opinions that are given by people so uh, normally uh, on the public platform or in the judiciary what happens is uh, supreme court is the apex court and uh, sometimes even say that uh, if we actually uh, defame even the supreme court that can be a contempt and uh, The, these are all our personal opinions and what we have to take as points for upsc our task is to get the points for the upsc exam and we'll do that accordingly and the courts no fundamental right to marry is wrong so uh, this also brings an important article regarding gs paper 2 polity law and governance and how the uh, recently supreme court refused to legalize the same sex marriage the same sex marriage and in this context it talks about what we call about a uh, right to life we have a right to live in this country and that is a right and that is even a human right so what about why can't we make right to marry a fundamental right so this is a key debate and uh, let's check what are your opinions on that let's apply the ias filter and uh, go into the important points right away supreme court ruling on marriage rights and this article clearly mentions about an important case supriyo chakravarti case so please remember we have already discussed i think you must you must have already discussed about the keshavananda bharati the barubari minerva mill case so there are a lot of cases that you remember about minaka ganti so remember the supriyo chakravarti case declared that there is no fundamental right to marry in india so this is a important case that it is no fundamental right to marry in india you do not have that fundamental right consequently the court decided that same sex individuals do not have the right to marry so fundamental right so right to marry is not a fundamental right according to supriyo chakrabarti then supreme court must have thought then same same sex people who want to get married the, the especially the lgbtq community so uh, they say that it's not a right supreme court said protections and directions but supreme court made clear that it unanimously directed that the same sex couples must be protected from harassment so they must be protected from harassment so uh, all these are important to sensitize the authorities on the issue and uh, their problems needs to be highlighted so that is one thing that the article talks about and next is the historical background so the supriyo chakrabarti is to be remembered and uh, even you can go back uh, you can see uh, sections 377 of the indian penal code uh, you can see the the navtej singh johar case in 2018 so the navtej singh johar case this case is very important because it decriminalized consensual adult sexual relationship between non heterosexual couples 
so this was also important so if there is a sexual relationship between two people a and another person b and the sexual relationship between the two people was based on consensual on the basis of consensus that means on the basis of consent you have agreed to that both of the parties are agreed and this was actually it was not between a man and a woman it was actually between non heterosexual couples that means it can be between people uh, who from belonging to the lgbtq community so previously having sex between two lgbt community was also treated as uh, unnatural or even it's not according to the law it was a crime but the naptate singh johar case section 377 of the indian penal code you can see the remember remember supriya chakravarti and naptate singh and uh, it supreme court decriminalized that so to just to get an idea about history there are a lot of judgments that you have to remember in this context and also bringing in the context of what is udhr nothing but universal declaration of human rights so in supriya chakravarti it is not a fundamental right to marry but the universal declaration of human rights say that men and women have right to marry and found a family without limitations based on race nationality or religion so what does our argument is this because majority of the human rights you see that majority of the human rights can be even seen in fundamental rights but not all human rights but majority but if right to marry is a human right why not right to marry is a fundamental right in india so that is the important argument put forward in this article and the article say about uh, discrimination and creation of a second class citizen so supreme court said the the article say it is an irony what is an irony it allows marriage between transgenders so true transgenders can actually get into a marriage and cisgender individual so what is this concept of cisgender so cisgender is simple uh, it's the same identity while you were at the birth imagine you were born a man and the doctor told you that you are a man and till now the moment you watch this you are a man and you feel that you are a man and you are you believe that your gender your gender is man then you are a cisgender <coughs> sorry if you if the doctor at the time of the birth you were a woman and the doctor said so and even then, even at this point of time you feel that you are a woman and you are a woman then it is cisgender because a lot of people at the birth they are a woman and after some time they feel that uh, uh, you get the important concept of questioning where you question and uh, explore yourself and find out that you do not belong to a man or a woman so that is why supreme court can allow marriages between transgender and cisgender but does not recognize same sex marriage so the article say it is ironic what is your opinion on that and uh, the decision perpetuates it, it say that the same sex couples are not suitable for marriages like uh, dealing them with the second class citizens so uh, the article says it is not good it, we should act actually approve this thing of the same sex marriage so this is the most important points regarding the article and uh, how does universal declaration of human rights play a role in the rights of marriage what is your opinion what implications does the supreme court decision in the supriya chakravarti case have for the same sex couples in india and how does it perpetuate stigmatization and discrimination so please do remember about this case and uh, moving on to the next important article as the himalayas and the ihr the indian himalayan region previously also we have discussed this is actually coming in the news so expecting a lot of questions from himalaya so remember it from the perspective of gs paper 3 environment conservation and biodiversity so let's apply the is filter and uh, quickly move on to the important contents let's take the most important point so what are the environmental concerns that you have in the himalayan states and it talks about a very important concept called carrying capacity it talks about an important concept carrying capacity so what is this carrying capacity is something that we have to discuss so the recent problems in the himalayan states himachal pradesh uttarakhand and sikkim can you mark all the states in the indian map please do find out about that 
has debated on carrying capacity that means it refers to the maximum population size an ecosystem or an environmental can support without causing harm or degradation say uh, this is a region imagine that this is a region and uh, carrying capacity refers to the size of the population that means there are people living in all these regions you can just take a look at this you can you can see people living in this ecosystem this is a region or an ecosystem it refers to the maximum population so this is the maximum population the maximum population that an eco that can ecological system or an ecosystem can hold to the maximum without having harm or degradation so please remember maximum size on ecosystem or an environment can support so please remember and the supreme court response the supreme court in response to a petition has uh, requested the union government to address the issue of ihr so what is ihr so is the indian himalayan region so know more about that uh, the government's affidavit suggests that establishment of an expert committee to assess the carrying capacity involving various organizations so even we need to have measure the carrying capacity without the carrying capacity it's very difficult because himalayan region especially himalayan region is a very fragile ecosystem it's a very fragile ecosystem so you should definitely have the carrying capacity idea or else it is going to be a big ecological disaster and let's take the other important points and and it also talks about various challenges and flaws in the past initiatives relating to carrying capacity so uh, previously also uh, we must have already calculated the carrying capacity and there are a lot of problems and the flaws and that is the reason why we need to have a sustainable development and a people centric approach regarding the carrying capacity activation or enumeration and it also asks the article calls for citizens representation in the expert committee uh, including residents from panchayat village and urban local bodies engaging with local population so whatever decisions you are you are going to take about the carrying capacity you should make sure you should include people you should also include the local people in making a decisions regarding carrying capacity is also very important to be noted here <coughs> okay so uh, getting three important question what is the concept of carrying capacity in the context of himalayan states why has it become a subject of concern again an important question how has the supreme court of india responded to the environmental challenges in the himalayan region what are the key components of the government suggested approach what are the important principles and consideration for addressing carrying capacity in the issue in the himalayan states and why is citizen representation deemed very crucial you know why citizens are very important is because when you determine the carrying capacity of himalaya definitely carrying capacity means it is a maximum number of people so when you have a discussion regarding the total people it's very important that you make the people participate you should also make this people in the participation process see ultimately people are involved in this carrying capacity and uh, everything so if you do not participate people then what is the democratic process so it's important that people representation is important so that was regarding this article and next one is regarding gs paper 2 international relationship especially regarding the israel palestine issue so let's quickly understand uh, the intelligence failure apply the is filter and go on it because it is talking about an intelligence failure and uh, it, let's we have already discussed lot of articles regarding israel and palestine and uh, i strongly suggest that uh, you already by this time if you do not know the israel palestine issue please watch or explain while i go to our youtube channel there is a detailed video on israel palestine please watch it to know the history and you already know the problems west bank gaza etc so the best thing that we can do right now is take the most important points okay strong condemnation of hamas definitely the world is condemning uh, hamas because it has attacked israel uh, with rockets boats motorcycles drones explosive and what does it show the attack of israel the attack of hamas clearly you can take a look at this the attack of hamas it's very simple the attack of hamas on 
israel we have only discussed about uh, what is the damage what is the international relations aspect so one thing that we have to understand the attack on hamas the attack of hamas into israel shows that israeli people did not had a good intelligence system what about mossad the famous intelligence system so the intelligence system could not decipher this attack of hamas so that is simple so uh, the in israeli intelligence struggle that is a word struggle to infiltrate hamas with human spies they could not place their human spies into hamas and faced a difficulty in gathering the information due to hamas strong communication security so previously it was israeli people who had the tougher security even hamas is having a strong security so uh, israelis could not infiltrate hamas they could not go into the hamas with a human spy so that is a intelligence failure and you can also see israeli intelligence may have underestimated this can also happen the israeli people are one of the most strongest intelligence agencies in the world but they must have underestimated hamas so that is the most problem and even benjamin netanyahu for uh, hamas to undermine rival palestine faction so uh, it has also accused israeli prime minister for using hamas to undermine rival palestinian faction fatah potentially divert security forces so again even the prime minister benjamin netanyahu was even accused uh, because of the various security level lapses so that is one of the reasons it might have uh, triggered and again conflict resolution so you know that uh, conflict resolution is not an easy word in israel palestine issue uh, whatever there is a problem the world is talking through this conflicts through negotiation and dialogue rather than force so there are two options either to negotiate either to negotiate have dialogue versus force what is force force is nothing but war it causes destruction and obviously everybody the world wants solutions through negotiation and dialogue so that there is no death and destruction so israeli intelligence so what does the article talks about hamas objectives so the at the reason attack of hamas into israel was actually to show few things one show the world that the palestinians are having a big time issue under israel number two because arab people and israeli were having a good relation so the world should know that palestine issue is a big problem and second we need retribution for israeli actions israel has attacked palestine for a long time so we need retribution we need the support we need to get back all the things that we used to have so that is number 2 and the third is to challenge the invincibility of israel what do you mean by invincibility that israel is unbreakable israel is unbreakable undefeatable we want to challenge that that is what hamas wanted to do and even it talks about a coordination that has happened so when you say it is hamas versus israel one thing that you have to note here is the article according to this article intelligence sources say that it must be not hamas alone it can be iran or it can be group like hezbollah and because majority of the meetings that happened in lebanon you see that it is not hamas it can be a collaborative the word is collaborative effort the attack by hamas on israel can be a collaboration where you can see support must have come from iran hezbollah the groups like based in lebanon etc so this is what the the article clearly mentions about all these important things and uh, next is regarding uh regarding the important thing yes the last one regarding the five years in 15 years five wars in 15 years have stifled gaza's growth so this one talks about again gs paper to international relationship so this talks about the poor amenities and infrastructure and all the poverty unemployment etc the difficult thing that the gaza is facing is actually mentioned here so let's take out and apply the is filter and take the most important points that we have to understand here so quickly move on one is gaza strip 
is a Palestinian territory, as you can know. It's facing financial difficulties and Israeli blockade since 2007. So it has a lot of financial problems and uh, something that you can note here. And in the past 15 years, and Gaza has actually gone in war, five wars. Just imagine it is a very poor situation and you go into war for five wars almost for 15 years. So just imagine, obviously, financial difficulty is the most obvious thing you can expect here. And Gaza was occupied by Israel during the 1967 war, but fully returned to Palestine in 2005. So even though you have returned it to Palestine, the problem still continue. And Israel has imposed air, land and sea blockade on Gaza. So even though you got it, gave back in 2005, air, land and sea blockade still continue at this point. So, uh, and you can see Israel has continuously controlling, controlling what? Its entry and exit points. So, you do not have a liberty in that country. And it has got five wars and uh, high civilian casualties and high poverty levels. It has high, high poverty level that you can see in this. And uh, moving on to the next important important points that we have to see. The GDP per capita in West Bank and Gaza and Palestine was just $5,722 in 2022. It is lower than India, but just above Pakistan. So you can also make another conclusion. Gaza is GDP per capita is much more better than Pakistan. Even though you can see it's a small area, it's much more better than Pakistan. And uh, you can see around 4,700 casualties. The recent war, so high, 4,700 people losing their life. And you can see the Gaza's population density is also among the highest in globally. And the region is densely populated, leading to challenges for the population. So high population explosion, uh, GDP per capita is it's better. It's, it's actually not that good, but it's much better than many other countries. But uh, having a very financial difficulties also. And a chronic unemployment, you don't have proper employment system. And the percentage of population are actively seeking employment. You can see 2021, the labor force participation rate in West Bank and Gaza was 43% and dropping to 35% in Gaza. So you look at the labor force participation, West Bank and Gaza. West Bank was 43, dropping to 35% in Gaza. So the labor force participation has also come down and the unemployment rates in Gaza was significantly high, reaching 45%. Just imagine... Out of the 100%, 45% of the people in Gaza does, do not have jobs. They are unemployed people. So this is the reality of uh, Gaza. And also about the medical related thing, Gaza has a shortage of hospital beds. Just imagine only 13 per 10,000 population. This is a very glaring thing. Only 13 beds. For 10,000 people, you have only one bed. So all these are the difficult things that you can see in Gaza and uh, something that you can really see in this context. So uh, I think these are the important points that we can discuss and we have come to the uh, end of the session. So uh, do subscribe to our channel and keep listening to the classes and uh, share it with your UPSC preparing friends and uh, see you for the next important class. So take care.